Hello and welcome to this really fun tutorial about promotion. Because today I'm going to show you how you can climb that mountain. So just follow me into After Effects. So if you have watched those few seconds of me climbing up that mountain, you may be wondering what exactly does he want to show us today. Well, it's actually two tutorials combined into one, a super zoom and a nesting. And oh, okay, it's actually three tutorials combined into one, because you will also learn how to create this. So, and as you can imagine, I wasn't really climbing all the way up there, because there was a sign that climbing is forbidden. But hey, it was not forbidden on that small rock over here. So I decided to climb up only the small rock because I actually already climbed up a very high mountain that day and after a few hours of swimming followed by my daily fitness routine, I thought I could skip another mountain. Yeah, well, you got me. I actually did not climb that mountain because I forgot my rope. But anyways, <laughs> what, what is the second tutorial I just mentioned? Well, I was not able to film such an extreme zoom with my 24 to 105 millimeter lens because I couldn't simply not get close enough. Because for that, I would need an expensive zoom lens. So what I did is I took two pictures, one with 24 millimeter, so a wide angle lens and one with 105 millimeter, which is already kind of a telephoto lens. But why does this help? Well, this is because when taking a photo, I have a higher resolution as for filming. So here you see a full HD frame. And when I place the image in here, you see that I can scale it up way more. And there's also something important to keep in mind. If you stay at the same position, zooming into an image is exactly the same as scaling it up. You do not change anything within the perspective. And to be honest, you could also film the rock climbing in a safe surrounding and then nest it into the final shot. Hey, and this is what I've done on a recent commercial shoot. And here's some behind the scenes I took while being on set. So, but before we jump into recreating this shot, Okay, and I'm also going to show you some cool extra compositing tricks at the end, because once I'm finished, I will add some spice to our shot. And therefore I'm again going to use some footage elements from Envato, because they have over 55 million assets from green screen footage to templates, images, sounds, music, and something that is really cool. And this is, they have 3D assets which means you can choose the angle of a pre-keyed element and it will match perfectly. And if you want to try out some of their stuff, there's a link in the video description that will give you a 70% discount. So you only pay nine bucks to try it out. And even in that time period, you can download as much as you want and also have the full license, even if you end your subscription. And in my example, the cabin, for example, is one of the assets, as well as the eagle, the rabbit, and some overall fog. And also the fancy mountain related outro is one of their templates, not to forget the sound of the eagle. So now let's import the two images I took, as well as the footage I shot. But instead of dragging it onto the comp icon, I want to create a new composition. Because by default, the composition has the same size as the asset we drag onto it when we create it. But remember, we want to create a full HD composition with an image that is way bigger. So next, let's actually drag and drop the images onto the comp icon and therefore create a comp in the size of the images. And in here, let's shrink down the close shot and quickly align it to our wide shot. You can also mask out the edges if you indeed see some warping or some vignetting. So next I'll quickly do a step that is not really necessary, but I want to show you the idea what we are doing today. So therefore I'm parenting the wide shot to the close up one, because when I hit S, I can see that it is scaled down and I can bring it up again. And you see that the wide angle shot scales with it. 
and as soon as the wide angle would reach the end of its resolution, we now have the close up shot covering up the image. And hey, if you have more advanced lenses, you could stack more pictures into that and really create zooms to infinity and beyond. Okay, so let's reset this and drag our comp we just created into the full HD composition. So now let's quickly animate the scaling and maybe also the position so we get a nice realistic zoom. And we can fine tweak this later when our climb boy is also in place. But hey, when I scale up now, I lose some resolution. Strange. This is because when we reach 100% scaling, After Effects only scales up the pixels and does not know that there's more info in our subcomp. Because remember, there's a scaled down image in there that technically can be scaled up way more. Hmm. Hey, and there's a way to tell After Effects to look for that. You simply can hit the collapse transformation switch over here and now After Effects will look into the subcomp and take the info from there into consideration. And boom, we have our zoom. <laughs> okay, now let's import the footage of me climbing. So let's shrink it down and mask out some parts. Hey, and a really handy feature here is to feather parts with the feathering tool. So you get the pen tool by hitting G. And when you hit G once again, you can add feather points. And when you drag them out, you can really control the feather amount of specific parts of the image. And I especially looked out for the structure of the rocks, cracks and so on to find a fitting spot. So once we have that, let's simply parent the footage to the mountain layer. And voila, we have a super zoom with me climbing on the rocks. And just think outside the box here. You could also use skyscrapers and place yourself on top or start from a really tiny, maybe microscopic place and zoom out into the real world. The only limitation is your imagination. Well, and your camera, your lenses, hey, and your shooting locations, <laughs> never mind. So before we jump into the tracking shot, as promised, let's quickly jump onto the Invato page and search for one or two nice assets for our shot. So let's type in cabin and search for a fitting one. Hey, and as I told you, you can now look for a fitting perspective. Hey, and maybe also a green screen animal. Oh, the goat fits perfect onto a mountain. So oh, maybe just for the fun, let's search for a skeleton because you know, maybe one of the climbers did not make it until the end. And now I'll just quickly drag them into the shot. The 3D file already have an alpha channel. Hey, and also the animal footage is pre-keyed. Great. So I'm only integrating them with the levels effect and some depth of field. Hey, and if you want to learn more about that, I made a quick tutorial with five compositing tricks. So make sure to check that out if you want to push your skills a bit more. Now that we have our first shot done, let's jump over to the drone shot. So I've already imported both clips. But before we do the tracking, let's go to the very first frame and scale and position myself so that it looks convincing. And to not bother you by showing you the same method twice, hey, let's quickly roto out myself and my shadow with the roto brush tool. So therefore you need to work on the layer and not the composition. Hey, and you can go there by simply double clicking on the footage. Now you can go to the roto brush tool and paint on the part you want to roto. And if you have fine detail like my hair, you can switch from roto to the refine edge tool and paint over that part too. And all the strokes you do will get stored within the effect. And you can also do a subtract stroke. So erase something when you hold down alt while painting. So now you could go through all the frames and paint over parts that you don't like. B boring. Hey, but let me tell you something. That tool is so amazing. So I really trust it so much that I will directly freeze the effect without checking each frame. You know, no risk, no roto. Because this is meant to be a short tutorial. So I simply click on freeze. And now we have a really great looking result. But honestly, if you 
do that for a client, please check your frames and add additional strokes wherever the roto is not perfect. Please. So back in our comp, I can now align myself on the rock and now comes the tricky part. So attention in three, two, one, we have to pre-comp this because you see the dimensions of the clip are now smaller than our composition. Or let's say they are simply different because it makes no difference if you would scale it bigger, smaller, rotate it, whatever. So therefore we need to pre-comp it, call it our tracking footage because it is super important that the clip you want to track and the clip you want to apply the tracking to are the same size as your comp. So, and now everything lines up again. And this is really super important. It is actually so important that I now force all of you to watch it again. <laughs> because it is super important that the clip you want to track and the clip you want to apply the tracking to are the same size as your comp. So, and now everything lines up again. And this is really super important. It is actually so important that I now force all of you to watch it again. Well, okay, this time we will go on because we would maybe end up in a time warp. So now let's apply the Mocha effect and directly click on the Mocha logo to launch it. And in here it is as simple as it gets. Create a rectangle or any shape around the area you want to track. Hit the tracking button and wait. And now again an important step in 3, 2, 1. We want to make this area again as big as our composition. So we can see the area we tracked by clicking on the planar surface button. And the button next to it does exactly what we want. It aligns the tracked surface to the frame size. And as this is important, let's rewind. We want to make this area again as big as our composition. So we can see the area we tracked by clicking on the planar surface button. And the button next to it does exactly what we want. It aligns the tracked surface to the frame size. And as this is important, let's rewind. Okay, you got me. No time warp from now on. Promised. So let's hit save and close Mocha. And now in the effect, we choose create tracking data and simply choose the layer we created in Mocha. For the export option, let's apply corner pin. And hey, there's a motion blur option, so to make it as realistic as possible, let's use that. And of course we want to apply it to the tracking footage. Now all we need to do is to apply it and let's watch our masterpiece. And while we watch it, I can already tell you that you made it until the end of this tutorial. So I really hope you learned something. So if you did, simply hit the subscribe button and in that way I can keep track of everyone who actually learned something today. And when all of the rest of you also click on the subscribe button, I also see the total number of views and can make an awesome statistic. But before I talk too much, I wish you a lot of fun climbing up the mountain with After Effects.